Today I'm going to be replacing one of the ball valves on my backflow preventer. Um, over the winter it ended up cracking and I need to replace it. Well, I see a lot of people replace this entire structure. Um, you can buy this as a single unit, but it's about $70 or so where I was able to find the exact ball valve I needed on Amazon for about $14. So big uh, cost savings there. If you want to do this job yourself, certainly capable of doing it. Just going to need a few tools. Um, these PVC uh, pipe cutters are nice. If you have PVC pipe, if you don't, well, you're not going to need them. But again, Amazon has these for about eight bucks. Hardware stores, you're going to pay fifteen to fifty, depending on how awesome you want to get. But um, save a lot of money just getting cheap ones because I'm probably only going to use them once. Uh, you're going to need a primer, your cement, Teflon tape and paste if you prefer and then just various wrenches and things like that that you might need um, other than that you know it's going to be a pretty straightforward job I don't really see too many problems I know I'm going to be replacing this mess of splice together piping with just a, a single splice and a new uh, pipe there and you know hopefully this will just go smoothly I'm a bit hungover so uh, I intend on making at least a few mistakes, but uh, hopefully not, and we'll get started quickly. All right, I'm gonna start cutting the PVC. I have to make two cuts, one here, one here, because there's three splices already, so I don't really have a choice. But I need to cut it up here so I can unscrew this right here. That's it. Could have been a straighter cut, but we'll live. So now, I'm just gonna unscrew this. Here we go. Just need to put a little muscle into it. Again, I'll blame the hangover. So that guy's coming out. Really nice. Off our other ball valve here. I'd like to say my water's off, but <laughs> we will see. All right, it looks looks like it is. So now I'll just remove uh, remove this one. I'm going to take that test cock off here first and that way I can spin it around. Some of these pull out of the house quite a ways but mine doesn't so that's why I have to go this route by kind of disassembling the whole thing so I can have the ability to unscrew it. some standard pliers. Oh well. That guy's coming out. Now hopefully this one will just drop on it. So what I'm gonna do is get this guy. Uh, larger ridge. 
could be funny. It probably just has a little bit of pressure in it still. Alright. There you can see that big crack. Hopefully you can see that, but that was causing some problems. So anyway, that's disassembly. It took, you know, if I wasn't dicking around so much, it would have taken even less time. But that's that. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned up all my fittings, my connections here. As you can see, I installed some new Teflon tape on this one already. Uh, remember to put your tape on clockwise, and better safe than sorry, just do about 10 uh, full circles. And make sure you're cleaning up all the old uh, tape, Teflon tape, or if they use the paste, get that all off of there, and then uh, just retape it up. So uh, that is what I've done. All right. So one other thing I'm doing, just for added security and my own OCDness, is I'm going to put a little bit of the paste over the tape as well. That's just to make sure that it's completely sealed. And it's not gonna come, it's not gonna leak on me. You know, I don't wanna do this job twice. So I kinda prefer to double up my precautions if I can. And that way, you know, we're just doing everything we can to make sure that we don't have to do this job again because we screwed it up. So I already installed this ball valve on um, this piece. You can do it either way. I could have probably put this on first and then put the top piece on, but I'm just going to go ahead and spin this on now. Get my hands completely filthy. But that's alright. Couple more turns, maybe just one. Might be done on this one. You just don't want to over tighten things and have them start breaking. So I'm gonna go one more. And call it a day on this. And I've never done this before. So if you are an amateur like me, you can do it too. Alright, so the next step was figuring the length of pipe I'm going to need to replace this piece. And I'm basically just doing a guesstimation. You know, this doesn't have to be perfect. But keep in mind that this pipe is going to fit to about right here, right where that 90 is. So you're going to want to measure your pipe accordingly and again it's just a guess it's not perfect because it doesn't have to be and uh, so I'm going to cut the big pipe and make that horrible splice together section disappear then uh, I went ahead and installed this fitting which is gonna, gonna also have to put together a little piece like this one has here so just a very small piece of pipe in the center that just joins up the elbow um, with this guy right here and then uh, everything will be all all done and we'll be able to test it so that's my next step I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut on the line there start putting this stuff together okay here's the final mock-up it did take me a couple cuts on the, the top pipe this one all right sorry for the cut off of the last clip but I ran out of memory on my phone so that's the reason for that um, anyway, I basically went over how to prime and cement your connections. Just make sure that the pipes are clean. Make sure that you're getting 
an equal coat of both primer and paste on both fittings. So you're going to want to do your pipe and also the joint. Just on, on both surfaces you're going to have to do priming, priming and cement. And uh, obviously let it cure. You know, if you don't do that and try to use it right away, it might um, not seal as, as well for you. So just make sure you're doing that and everything should be good. I turned the water on and I have no leaks. So it looks like my repair worked, which I'm pretty happy about. So yeah, you can do this at home and save a few hundred bucks. So do it. <laughs>